Hi, I'm Chris and we are JCD. In this week's episode, we're down at Margate Beachfront for some pipe remodeling for a customer. We take a trip to the Excel Center for the National Drainage Show and we're down at Lock Meadow Entertainment Complex where we've got a massive duck cleaning job to carry out. Let's roll the footage. Welcome back to the channel, guys. <clears throat> it's Monday morning. Me and Adam are down at HQ. It's been a minute since we put some content down. As you know, last week wasn't the best of weeks at JCD, but we're back on form this week. So Adam's joined me down at HQ, and we are gonna put down a bunch of shorter format content that we put out across our other social channels. We're gonna do that all today, and then this afternoon, I'm gonna have a catch up with some of the emails that I didn't get to the back end of last week, because say I was, I sort of really had Thursday and Friday off. This week, we've got a bit of an interesting week. We've got a podcast going on. We've also got the National Drainage Show at the XL, which we're gonna do a total standalone video for. I've got a meeting with a solicitor tomorrow as well about a slip that happened at one of our sites, so that'll be interesting. I know it's an unfortunate event, but I've never had to deal with that before, so it'll be interesting going through that process, and I'm sure we'll be able to defend that claim. So a busy week this week, hopefully lots of exciting content. So let's jump into Monday and get putting down some of this content. Now this might seem like I'm stabbing myself in the back. No, what am I doing? Cut my own throat. Yeah, let's go. How often should your business be going out to market or retendering your cleaning or service-based contracts? So we've just finished putting down our content downstairs. We managed to get a nice chunk of content down, which is good. We batch do that, especially the shorter format content. So we've done 10 videos, which will be released on our social platform over the coming weeks, months, however often Adam decides to distribute it. We're gonna do um, some, what are we doing now? Doing our intros, that's it. We do our intros for weekly. We have to do them obviously retrospectively because we never know what's gonna go on in that particular week. So we're just gonna film some of them down and then that is gonna wrap up Monday. Tomorrow, as I say, I have a solicitors meeting. They're coming to HQ, Sharon's gonna meet me here and I'll give you guys a little bit of an update about that. And then the latter part of the week, we are at the National Drainage Show, which should be super interesting. And uh, you never know, we might come away with that tanker that I promised that we would buy on the channel some time ago. Who knows? So make sure you guys check in for that one. So that's going to wrap up Monday, guys, and I will catch you guys in the morning. Good morning, team JCD. We've made it to Tuesday. Good day yesterday with Adam getting some of our shorter format content down. A bit of a quiet week this week in terms of what's going on operationally. The boys are just out. They've got some post-construction cleans on some continuing projects that we've got going on. My week is relatively flexible. We've got a busy day tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, I am on my fourth podcast. Um, seems to be a few of them lately, which is nice. Um, I have a podcast in the morning, and then me and Adam are going to the XL for the National Drainage Show to see what new stuff is up there, um, see if there's anything that catches our eye, and we'll be taking you guys and doing a standalone video about that. Today, I am in HQ, as you can see at my desk this morning. I've just gone through some posts and caught up with some of my emails. Um, I've got a solicitor coming down to see us at 10 o'clock, um, and I hear you ask, why is that? We got a contract in Kent that is quite public facing, and unfortunately, a lady, two, three years ago now, um, tripped over some loose paving. Now, for some reason, we've been named as a co-defendant. I'm not quite sure why. Nothing. This is nothing to do with our contract. We're a cleaning contractor, and we clean the internals. Um, so I'm not really sure why we were named on this. Um, but you know, we are. I did go back to the client and ask this, and they said, "Oh, well, you sort of our eyes and ears down there, which is 
a little bit of a get get out, but um, we'll roll with the punches. Um, so we've got a solicitor from our insurance company coming down just to go through the event, what happened, the contract that we've got in place down there because it doesn't include any grounds maintenance, um, what risk and method statement, some of the processes we've got in place. Um, so yeah, they're coming down at 10, it's around 20 past nine now. Um, hopefully that shouldn't take up too much time. I've got our operations director, Sharon, coming down to give me a hand with that just for, from a paperwork perspective to make sure that's all in place. And then what I'm gonna do, I have got a drainage job, a job I surveyed about two years ago now for a refurb down in Margate in Kent. A young lady has rung us up and said that she's been let down by a contractor and she needs some help relaying some of the drainage. So once I finish with the guy from our legal department, I am gonna take you guys with me down to Margate and we're gonna have a look to see how we can help this lady. But for now, I'm gonna crack on with some emails and wait and for Sharon and our solicitor. So let's spin round and see what emails I missed yesterday evening. But that was my initial concern yeah. was like, oh man, all right, we yeah. better live up to that tone. I just remember saying like, if we know where we're going, where yeah. we're going with yeah. this. I don't know if it was something we just did conversationally, but we were talking about what was like up and down. Like, I mean, it was obviously on post-its up, like the scenes were on post-its Yeah, up. I mean, the, the very first thing that I did. So I have just arrived down in Margate. We have come down to look at a job for a customer. They need some help moving some drainage in a flat on the Margate seafront. I've been to this job before. It was a while ago to be honest, so it'd um, be good to familiarize myself with the job. We had a meeting with our solicitor, so a little bit of background on that one. We had a lady that tripped over some loose paving on one of our contracts, 2019. Um, around three months ago, I get a letter um, from a local court that this is going to court transpires that the customer hadn't informed us and um, they had just put us down as a co-defendant as we managed the maintenance down there apparently um, I checked back in the contract and although we do manage the FM on site now at that particular time it wasn't part of our contract um, so you know I've gone back I've told the customer this face to face before seeing the solicitor um, so be interesting one to see how that plans out it was it's difficult not to get annoyed with it that they didn't speak to us first but we still got an ongoing relationship with this customer which makes it even more awkward um, but we have had those conversations and moving forward to our new contract that we've just recently retained we will be managing the FM on site so we will manage the contractors differently and all the maintenance differently to how they have um, so yeah interesting morning first time which I'm pleased to report since 2014. But we've just got to Margate, so I'm gonna go and see the customer now and have a look around at this job. Well, all good in life, not great down here. Yeah, I've been here, I've come here a while ago. Did you? So, so, yeah, partner, so. Jen would have been here. So yeah, so issue is here. So over the weekend, it got congested. You can see where it's kind of been a job. Oh, come out, job. yeah. So there used to be a, down, a soil pipe down pipe straight down in that corner. Yeah. Uh, that was taken out because we're having French doors going in there, so we had to move it. Right. But it hasn't been done correctly. Okay. The ambition, if I'm honest, is to have, to basically try and tidy up all of this pipe work. Yeah. Try and do things correctly. And you look all down the back. Yeah, I wouldn't be against that going across. Okay. And then into this one. But if this one needs tidying up to make it work, then that again is... I mean, it's just, it's not as bad as that. And, it, well, and it's accessible, isn't it? See, in the top there, what you do is you get it effectively, it's like a small cage. You would put it in there. Sink, yeah, yeah, exactly. It lets the water flow through, but all these bits of debris, which naturally get in gutters anyway, yeah. it stops them, especially when you've got heavy rainfall and these get quite full, they get dragged into the line. Um, and if you've got a long run like that, although it looked like it's got a decent fall on it, that will sit in the line. Um, and then you start putting tissue on top of it. If that corner then's okay, if that, if that drop's acceptable. Yeah. In terms of... And then you just... That makes sense. Do you have any preference on colour? Grey or black? Yeah, black. Black, black. Oh, oh. I think it's in keeping with everything else down there, isn't it? Unless it's in your eyesight, like like it unfortunately is for you guys. People yeah, don't really... Yeah, I think this target, like, you know, if there's, if there's one and it all, if it's all coming through, I said, like, I, I look at the back and I go, look at that one over there. Yeah, looks a lot better.
we have just finished with that particular customer as i say i have been to that job before i've done an initial survey when the customer bought that property it's a sub basement flat um, in margate on the beach lovely location right opposite the seafront as you can see which is behind me <coughs> what they've got is effectively they've got the soil stack and the various rainwater stacks for the entire property <coughs> running in their back garden um, and it's a bit of a mess to be honest it's been added to taken away being repaired there's different colors some of it's gray some of it's black and they just effectively want to tidy it up which we can do quite easily um, they want to take it out their eye line so that it's not such a big you know eyesore when they've got guests round or they're using their garden which makes perfect sense to be honest um, what spurred this on is they had a blockage there the other day um, one of the tenants called a drainage contractor out and um, they were questioning the setup there it is an odd setup to be honest as i say it's been added to and taken away over many years which is not uncommon when you see multi-tenanted properties like that um, you know someone will add a washing machine or same breaks and then they put a new piece in so um yes not not uncommon um to see but we'll get the customer back a price and then we'll hopefully we'll get the work booked in and get it repaired and looking a little bit better for them um what have i got on the rest of the day i'm going to head back home now i'm going to carry on doing some work at home it's coming towards the end of the year and things are a little bit quiet to be honest the boys are just out with some of our regular um builders clean projects that you know that where we do hundreds of houses um, and they've got stuff in every day and they're just doing that it's a good time to sort of sit back and review what we don't want to do is take the rest of the year off that's not what i'm saying um, but it's just a good time to stand back take stock of what's gone on this year anything we can improve on next year and we'd like to see one thing i think i am going to do um, early part of next year is look for an external salesman um, so recruit someone in-house that can do our business development um, or certainly help with our business development because what I find is it's very up and down dependent on what is happening with myself so if I'm busy with grey water drainage or I'm dragged back into operations for whatever reason the sales process has some lulls in it which we want to try and avoid really um, we're of the size now we're making the decent revenue um, so I think it's time that we took that step and got someone in um, obviously it was mentioned and discussed on the james sinclair podcast that i was on and i think it's time to be honest i keep putting it off um and talking myself out of it but i know it's something that needs to be done it's the next logical step in our growth so um yeah that, that that'll be an interesting one and obviously i'll take you guys along on that journey i've got a podcast tomorrow as i mentioned earlier i'm looking forward to that one it's a cleaning pacific podcast i'll talk about the industry so we'll obviously put that out as a standalone video and this one will be recorded it's going to be online on zoom but we're recording that that's with matt from growth labs um, so i'm looking forward to that see what's going on there but that's going to wrap up today guys i will see you in the morning for the podcast and then we are at the national drainage show Good morning team JCD, it's Wednesday morning, it is bright and early, uh, it's not even light outside yet, that's how early it is. Um, I've come down to JCD HQ, we are on the Growth Lab podcast this morning, it's at 7 o'clock, we've got 5 minutes so I'm just going to jump on the Zoom call. Um, we're going to film the whole session so we'll be able to put that out on social like we do a lot of our podcasts and we'll put some snippets in for you now. Um, yes, yeah, it's, it's a cleaning Pacific um, podcast, so it'll probably be uh, a lot of questions related around running a cleaning business, how that is, some of the challenges you come up against. So it should be interesting. Once we've done that, I have an appointment at 8.30, but then I am meeting Adam and we are heading to the XL for the National Drainage Show to see what is going on in the drainage world and any new innovations that are around. So an interesting day and all in all. So let's log on this Zoom call and get on this podcast. So we have, um, time is now, just before eight o'clock, um, we have just finished with Matt on the uh, the Growth Lab podcast. Uh, nice guy, first time I'd spoke to him. Um, he's been in the industry for a little bit. Uh, he had a company that he, he sold. Always make always interesting to speak to people that have um, exited a company. Uh, I'd just like to hear that story. And um, who knows, maybe when, we, when I'm a bit older, because I am only young, um, you know, that's something we'll look at. Uh, it's definitely an option down the line, although we are nowhere near I want the business to be yet. So um, we spoke about a few things and it's, you know, 
podcasts that some people try and keep them relatively short, which is which is fine. And I, I like to listen to sort of 20, 25 minute um, you know, podcasts and James Sinclair was the same, that was around thirty minutes. Um but there's such and this is why we do what we do and why we go on these podcasts and, and to raise the industry profile. There's so much you can talk about. It's such a diverse industry. Um, you know, we spoke about it from really a business owner's perspective today, but there's just so many avenues um, that you can go down in the cleaning industry. Um, you can, you know, be, people think, oh, it's cleaning. Um, you can be and do anything you want in the industry. You know, there's management levels, there's senior management levels, there's robotics, there's um, chemical engineering with material. There's just so much. And um, Matt said about maybe doing uh, a second one um, because we spoke about sort of the, the sales process, um, you know, inbound, outbound marketing and things like that because this is really aimed at sort of business owners that are just starting their business or are trying to grow it. Um, so, you know, you want to talk about sales process and things like that and it was definitely useful. Um, so we'll put that out as we always do on our channel. Um, yeah, we had a, I had a little conversation with Matt about some of our YouTube stuff, which was interesting. You know, obviously we're trying to grow our YouTube platform. The more eyes we can get on us and the industry, the better. Um, so I had a chat with him about that. He's going to send me some stuff. He's done some interesting stuff on YouTube recently. Um, so yeah, a good morning, good use of an hour. Well worth getting up early for. It is nearly daylight outside. I'm just looking out the office window. Um, I have an appointment at 8.30, um, so I've got around a half hour I'll, I'll probably need to leave in about 15 minutes i've got that and then adam is going to meet me down at hq and we are going to head up to the xl for a day out at the london drainage show and see what's going on up there i haven't been to the drainage show before i missed it last year um so yeah be interesting to see what he's got i'm under strict orders from the wife not to come away with a tanker but what she doesn't know don't hurt her right so we'll see how that goes so i'm going to go to my appointment and i'll catch you guys in a minute when adam gets here Adam's joined me. We met at my house about 9.30. Thought we'd have a nice quick drive up to the XL. But as whenever Adam joins me to come to London, it's a shit show. We've, uh, we're outside the Dartford Tunnel. It's only, the XL is probably only over there behind me. Um, but the tunnel's shut now. Um, sat nav says we've got, well, it doesn't say, 11.13. 11, so that's what, 45 minutes. Um, so we are stuck here. Not much we can do. Luckily, it's a two-day show. Um, we'll probably get around it all, to be honest. I, I've been to a couple of these shows before, and they generally take around half a day. So we, we've got plenty of time, but we'll just have to sit it out and uh, wait for the traffic to die down, I guess. Not much we can do. Must we walk over there, leave the car here. Black Hawk Tunnel. Some time later. There are someone in the news and the person in the news <laughs> Excel. Come on. Three. So we've finally got to the XL. The Blackwall Tunnel was shut for about 45 minutes, right? 45 minutes. But we've made oh, we've made it now. We've just arrived. We found a nice car parking space, which is handy. I think we'll get the train next time though. For the uh, cleaning show early part of next year. So um, yeah, we're gonna put this in the car and then we'll head inside and see what is going on. We don't get run over first. Right, let's whack, whack this in the car. Right. 
So we've just arrived at the training show in the XL. It was quite a long walk from the car park, but it is a big place. I never knew there were so many expos that go on in this place. They've got sales, home expo, and we're obviously here today for the drainage expo to see what's new for the industry for Greywater Drainage, our sister company. So we're gonna have a wander around first and see if anything takes our interest, and then we'll probably go back to the particular stall that takes our interest and have a more detailed discussion. So let's go and see what's about. Here we go. What I've been told, I'm not allowed to go and buy. I'm not allowed to spend the money. Electric as well. Mind you though, it's not too dissimilar to ours in terms of its build, is it? It doesn't even look that big, much bigger, does it? Really? That's definitely our next drainage purchase, big one, a bigger tanker. I wish I had bought a slightly bigger tanker than the one we've got, to be honest, because there's not much difference in price, but you get a lot more capacity. The only good thing about ours is versatile and it gets in small spaces. So, lesson learned with that one, but at least we've got one in the fleet now. But look at the quality on that camera. Sorry, mate. Sorry, buddy. No, it's all right. much better quality, look. Who's a, who's a ugly? It'll be perfect. <laughs> Not with that though. Not with that bit, but just normal. That's for like gully empty and storm drains and things like that. But it's a good sized tanker. That is exactly what we're gonna get next. I think it based on the size of the wheel, like how many wheels is do you need, I imagine you need a heavy goods vehicle license for that, wouldn't you? I think so. Yeah. Soon. I might not do it in a year, I said in a year in that video last time, didn't I? But we'll, we'll see. We'll How see. are you? Yeah, fine, I'm Darren. Darren, nice to meet you. Are you yeah. local to us, aren't you, Darren? Yeah, we're in Ashford in Kent. That's yeah. it? Yeah, we've got a little stand here today just yeah. to see what's happening here. How's it going? You know? All right, a bit quiet though. Yeah. You know why? The, Blackwall Tunnel was at a standstill, weren't it, for ages? Yeah, we, well, I got in early, oh. so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so. yeah. so you finding it useful, or? Yeah, so, I mean, so. we always meet a few people, even if it's just looking at other equipment yeah. that we might end up sure. finding yeah. or whatever, you mm. know, so, yeah. yeah. So what, what pipe nice. diameter does that particular crawler go up to? You go from a nine inch pipe, um, and depends on, there's a cradle for it. You can go up to about a 1.2 meter oh. pipe with okay. a sort of kit. So big mains ones, you know. Yeah. I say we've got the scan probe at the moment with the push rod, but right. it doesn't have the capability for a cooler, I don't think, does it? Not the, sure. no. No, no, not what you've got no. there. Um, so me and Adam have eventually arrived at the drainage show. We've had a look around now. We've filmed some bits for a standalone video, which we'll obviously put out on our YouTube channel for you guys to have a look at. It's been interesting to come here. This is the first time I've come to the drainage show. It's not as big as I imagined, if I'm being honest. It's in only one hall. I've been to a couple of expeditions before and they are massive scale, but I suppose they're not as niche as the draining industry is. I mean, even the cleaning show is substantially bigger than this, which will be at early part of next year. Um, but it's interesting to walk around, caught up with one of our suppliers who supplies some of our kit, met some new suppliers, which is always good because, you know, it gives us some options in terms of other units. I mean, we see the rear air tanker that is behind Adam now. There's another version of that, which I've never seen before. Um, so it's good to speak to those guys at Superjet and it gives us some options. We've looked at some cameras as well. We're in the market for some new drainage cameras over the next six months, I would say. Um, so it's been an interesting visit. I say a little bit smaller than we imagined, but the reoccurring theme here seems to be electric. The problem we have with that is, or that I have with that is, if you look at the cost of an electric unit, it's substantially more than a normal drainage van unit. Can you warrant that cost? Probably not yet. I think it's got to come down substantially. Um, I mean, they've got a large tanker over there that's totally electric, and I'm going to go over there and see the guy and try and find out how much that is. But the cost benefit at the moment, the cost just by far outweighs the benefit for us. So um, be interesting to see how that develops over the next couple of years. But a useful afternoon, early afternoon spent at the drainage show. So we'll carry on walking around and we'll give you guys an update shortly.
So me and Adam have just finished wandering around the drainage show, nearly got chucked out at the end, which is always interesting viewing. The guy said we should have asked before, but hey ho. So we just finished. There was some interesting stuff there. As I mentioned earlier on, there seems to be that push towards electric, but the cost benefit for me, just they're just nowhere near where they need to be at the moment. We looked at that tank, we looked at a tanker at the end and to buy it in diesel was about 200 grand. To do it in electric, it was double the price and just no normal company is gonna be able to warrant that just yet. It's gonna be your big water balls and people like that that will do it early days and then as the price comes down, maybe everyone else will follow suit. But it was useful to come along. We'll see if we come next year, see what time depending. It was a little bit smaller than I imagined, but still nonetheless useful. So that's gonna wrap up here. We're gonna head back in the car. I have got to get back to reality when I get back and I've got to go and unblock a block toilet. It's a day in the life of what we do and that's why we show you guys behind the scenes because I'm out and about being one of the managing directors of a drainage company and suppliers dealing with them and now I've got to go out and unblock toilets but that is what the real world is about. But anyway, let's get back inside, head in the car and head back to Kent. And just like that, we are back to reality with a bang. Um, I, me and Adam have parted company. Of course, you're going to see him again. Um, but for the day, he's gone off to edit the video at the training show. A uh, useful morning, as I say. First time we've been to that show. Um, I'm sure we'll pop back there next year. Interesting day out, see if anything's new on the market. Um, still can't get over some of the prices of that electric stuff. I think that's, you know, I think that's even in, in the, even in the cleaning industry. There's still a long way to go for cleaning uh, for electric technology to, to be superior to some of the other models we use because, or battery technology, shall we say, um, because the price point is still so high. I mean, you look at like some of the battery technology that we've got in the cleaning industry, it's considerably more than obviously a plug-in model. Um, you know, inferior runtime, you know, plug into a mains, you can run forever. Um, so yeah, interesting to see though, uh, enjoyed it. Um, it was good good use of time now I am at a job that we have been to before they have got a block toilet in Twiddle in Kent so I've gone from MD to drainage engineer just like that so let's jump out the van and get this lady flowing again hello again again it's not ideal is it no have you checked this cover um, we haven't but when it leaks the water comes out when it, when it does get stuck yeah. the water does come up over the top of it right okay we assumed that that wasn't we'll, we'll find that in a second um, um because we'll... it, it bubbles yeah right down the bloody path right it does over. oh really yeah the water just because you empty the bath out yeah it just goes everywhere yeah all right okay all right let's have a lousy for you see how it's like bends you've got lots of bends in it yeah it's just that's not ideal yeah not ideal at all like what you don't what you don't want is you don't want it coming off there and directly going 90 into there it's an unusual place to have it to be honest really that this pipe should yeah. be here so it just goes straight um all right no worries so i'll get it done It's literally on that bend. And just like that, it's done. Uh, we have been to this customer before, and I always feel a little bit bad for customers that I've been to before, but it was around two months ago now, the lady remembers. 
I actually feel I actually film this job. I don't feel all film all the drainage jobs I go on. Um, there's probably a bit more, but I just obviously don't want it to get a little bit repetitive for you guys. But I did actually film this one. Um, the setup upstairs, it's got a normal toilet bin, but it's got a 90 sweep on it, and it's actually got a, a 45 in that 90 as well. Um, the, the lady, and actually it's quite refreshing to be honest, she says um, that they use wipes, they prefer them, um, and that's their choice. It's her house at the end of the day. Um, but they do cause blockages because if they get snagged on something and you know they're sitting in the pipe, other stuff builds up behind them, whereas toilet tissue that will dissolve over time. Um, but we cleared that with our rigid flex staff machine. We had to clear it from the top. Um, so literally put it around the bend and the chain run round and cleared the blockage. Um, so she's all up and running again. Nice and quick job, took me about 25 minutes. Um, I'll have to give the lady a uh I have to start doing a reward card for repeat customers or something like that. But she's a really nice lady and um, she knows that they're blocking it with wipes at the end of the day, which you can't get fairer than that. And I appreciate her honesty. Sometimes I get to jobs like that where it's a single line. the That's the only toilet line on it. And they go, oh, it's not me. It's not us that's using wipes. And what they don't understand is drainage engineers can tell where, where these come from. So there's no possible other way it can come from anywhere but your particular house. So, um, you know, just bear that in mind when you say, you might as well just say, yeah, look, sorry, I use them. At least, in the, at least the engineer knows what they're dealing with on that particular day. Um, so, yeah, busy day today. Lots of different stuff going on. It just shows you guys that one minute, as I mentioned a couple of times in the video, we are walking around at the National Drainage Centre um, or the National Drainage Show. You know, people are... It was interesting. Adam's with me. Don't believe me when I say this, but um, I have had since putting content out i have had a few people come up to me and say oh i recognize you from linkedin you know which is um it's only been a handful but still it boosts my ego um so yeah a couple of guys come up to me there said oh you're chris from um from you know uh, linkedin jcd i actually met a guy who i'm connection with on linkedin andy butler um who's from dcr which is which is nice to to meet the guys there um and have a chat with them we've got a standalone video coming out with that so a uh a, a colleague from the cleaning industry darren smith from purple rhino so uh yeah it was interesting to have a couple of people come up and say they've seen the content and recognize what we're doing that's always super nice um so yeah that wraps up wednesday guys it's a bit early don't worry, we're not going to slack off. It's around 3.30, what I'll do ahead on now. I do this most evenings. I'll finish my day. I go home. If I am home in time, I'll pick my daughters up from school because that's a nice thing to do. I'll generally go to the gym or work out pretty much as soon as I get home from picking the kids up. If I am around to pick them up, I'm not going to be today. Um, and then the rest of the evening, I generally sit there with my laptop, catching up on the day's emails. I've had a couple of quotes that I've got to do that have come through today. And I spend most of my evening until around eight o'clock on my computer. Don't get me wrong, I'm on the sofa in my pants nine times out of 10, but I'll always have my laptop on the desk. So when I finish with you guys, I go home and I'll do more work. I'll catch up on the day. I'll do some inbound out, um, outbound marketing that I need to do, catch up on any social media stuff that's been going on. Um, so the day never stops when I turn the camera off. There's plenty of other stuff going on, um, but I can't. The battery won't last for me taking you guys around with me for a 14 hour day every day. Um, so yeah, interesting day. Hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, I will catch you bright and early in the morning. Good morning. Is it morning? Yeah, still morning. 10.26. What's happening? We are down at Lock Meadow again. This is not the only client we've got, I can promise you that. Um, so we're down here, customer calls. I mentioned in the video before, we do lots of work with this customer. Um, so it's natural that we're gonna be down here every so often with bits and pieces that need doing. They called me the other week and said, Chris, we've got one of our restaurants that needs some kitchen duct cleaning. They've had some new ducting installed on the roof. You may remember we done the pigeon removal there. We washed down the area because there's pigeons um, that like to sit up on the top. So he called us now and the ducting that we've cleaned so that they can access and put some doors in, they now need a price for for us to clean the actual ducting that comes in from one of the restaurants down below. So we're meeting one of our subcontractors here, Sid. He does um, 
he does all of most of our ducting to be honest um, in local area uh, he's a personal friend of mine as well so I'm just uh, catching up with him down here we're gonna have a look at this job and then get a customer a price this morning I had a drainage job before I have turned you guys on um, lady called me really nice lady uh, older lady um, and her husband they called me yesterday they have got a gully outside that just doesn't go um, you know they thought it was blocked uh, we I went there, I jetted it out, gave it a little plunge, and it's not going anywhere. Um, I put the flex shaft machine down there. It seems to be going, but I'm wondering if it's not connected to anything. It's just effectively a soak away. Um, I haven't got the camera on board, there's still a scan probe. I've been a bit lazy and haven't gone over there to pick it up yet. Um, so I might do that today. I'm gonna to head over there, I'll go and pick that up, and then what we'll need to do is go back and survey it, because there was a manhole at the front which is for a soak away but there's no pipes that sort of connect in the same direction so it's a bit of a mystery that one still um it's definitely not draining away so we'll have to go back and uh and um, speak to the customer get the camera down there and get it sorted and hopefully it goes somewhere and it's just blocked and we can unblock it for them or in the unfortunate event it's not we're gonna have to try and connect it with something because it's creating a slip hazard where so much water sitting on the patio it's not going they're getting a green moss there and it's a it's a slip hazard and as i say they are of the old generation so we're down here we'll wait for sid then we're going to go up have a look at this ducting i'll take you guys around with that then i've got another job to quickly go and look at um, a fencing job so a fence is blown down for a customer we do some general bits of maintenance for so we'll go down and have a look at that and then yeah we'll see what the rest of the day holds so let's get wait for sid and then we'll get up and have a look at this ducting Oh, is Tristan around by any chance? Yeah, he's speaking. Here's Chris from JCD. Tell him I've come to have a look at the ducting he needs cleaning. Oh, okay, no worries. Come through the ducting. Cheers, mate. Fucking don't drop yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I call him. Doesn't look too bad though, does it? A little bit of grease in there. So we've uh, we've had a nosy around that particular contract. I had seen the ducting previously, um, but it was around a year ago, and uh, the management has changed on that particular site now. Um, so yeah, Sid's local to me. Um, he'll come down. He'll do it to the right standard certification, and all, all that good stuff. No. Oh, new job coming um all that good stuff so uh, yeah we'll get a price it's quite a big job because obviously there's lots of food outlets in this place and the ducting goes all the way through the building up onto the roof uh, that bloody roof uh, up there again so um so yeah a fair chunk of work there to be honest but um, nothing we can't get done so that wraps that up i'm now going to head over to croydon i've got to pick up our drainage camera i've left it there a couple of days and i need it for a job tomorrow so i'm going to drive over there now and then i've got a couple of other jobs that need doing but we'll see how the damn pans out so um let's get over to scan probe and pick up our camera let's go Short drive over up to Godstone um, and Scan Probe. Just got here. Um, whilst I'm here, I'm actually going to ask them about another camera. I need a slightly smaller one that gets around smaller pipe diameters. So I'll ask the guys for a little bit of a price when I get here. So let's head inside, pick up a camera. Hey, mate. Hey, mate. Yeah. That's it. Took me about two weeks to get here. <laughs> So we have picked up our trusty drain camera. They have done the work with it. We, um, when I last picked it up, to be honest, it, it the, the lens was 
not very good. The picture wasn't great. I've checked it and it's much better now. Um, <clears throat> I'll just have a look at the another one as well, a trap jumper, which is a slightly smaller camera, a little bit more flexible. It's good for getting around the new bends and traps. Obviously, that's why I call it trap jumper. Um, have a look at that. It's around two and a half thousand pounds, the new one, um, which which is fine. So uh, I'll probably get one of them. To be honest, in the next couple of weeks, uh, I might just reach out to my guy just see if there's any wiggle room on that because um, you know we've got all scan probe stuff anyway. But uh, yeah, we'll have a look. So pick that up. So we'll be using that for a job tomorrow. The job I was at this morning, I've got to go back to, and I'll take you guys to that. I have had a flurry of um, drainage jobs come in this afternoon. I had a free day tomorrow, but that's obviously not going to be the case now. So I'll go out and do all them. I'm going to head back to home now, catch up on some emails. So that's going to wrap up Thursday, guys, and I'll. See you tomorrow we've got a couple of bits to do in the morning and then we'll see what the rest of the afternoon holds oh so we've made it to friday friday <laughs> definitely friday just double checking we've made it to friday a busy week this week we've been down all over the place we've been down as far as margate and we've been up to the xl at the national drainage show which as I've mentioned on the channel, we're going to do a standalone video for that to show you what we see there. So make sure you keep an eye on that. And one thing that was nice is to bump into people. I'll mention it again. Even got recognised by a couple of people from the content that we put out at the National Drainage Show. But to put some faces to names of pump, some people I haven't met, so like Andy Butler. Obviously good to catch up with other suppliers um, at Rearned, Mark. I am hoping with Rearned that we can actually go out to where their stuff is manufactured. I believe it's actually the same place as um, iTeam Global. Um, so over in Idenhoven, I believe that's where all the kit is made. So I'm working on that with Mark, trying to trying to convince him to fly me and Adam out there um, so we can do some videos, let you guys know sort of how that kit's made and what it looks like. I think that'd be an interesting one to do. Um, so an interesting and varying week. What have we got on next week? The main focus of next week, we've got a big repair job on next week. So um, customer called me, well, actually it was a recommendation, and they've taken over on site. It's an old, old-fashioned school where they're doing some works. Um, they've had a survey done by another drainage company, which he has then sent to us um, as a recommendation from a plumber who I know, um, Wayne. And yeah, there's there's a few bits and pieces to do. They've got some buried manholes, they've got some root cutting to do, there's some patches and lining that needs to be done there. But one of the main things that is there, it looks like a either a fouled liner or a calibration hose is stuck in one of the main lines that leaves the property. So that will need robotic cutting. Now, I'll be honest, we're not at JCD, I don't get contractors in and then pretend that's my own work. Um, so I don't have the kit to do robotic cutting. So we'll be using a contractor of ours, a colleague of ours, uh, Ben from Blue House Drainage. He'll be coming along and helping us out with that. You know, it's, I, I, it baffles me when contractors do that, you know, put something out that's not your work and pretend it is. Just like if, if it's not in your wheelhouse or it's not something you've got in house, then just, just to say I'm, I don't see what the big deal is you know we've got Ben at Blue House Drainage coming down and he does any of our long lining work so if it's patch repairs and things like that we do that in-house but if we've got any substantial piece of lining he will do that because we've done it before and it's a pain in the backside to be honest so um, why not get someone that's an expert in it to come and do it I just I've never under never understand that um, to be honest or why people are shy of that so yeah that would be an interesting one, and hopefully we'll do you know a bit of a piece on that. I'll probably get Adam probably come along to that one, and we'll film what goes on, what happens when drainage goes wrong because it does. I've been in a scenario where we've done a liner before, and this is why I don't do them. I think it was about twenty meters, six meter pipe, um, a six inch line, and the calibration hose it wheels back in on a drum. Usually depends what method you use, and it got stuck. We eventually got it out, but it was a real bump out in moments. So um, let's say it's easier. Ben's a good guy. Steve, the guy who works with him, is a good guy as well. They know what they're doing. Get get someone better than you here. That's what business is about, right? If you got, haven't got a skill, you either fake it till you make it, which can be painful at times, or you just get so, or you hire in someone else that just knows how to do it, and that's what we're going to do. And hopefully we'll do a standalone video 
on that one. So yeah, um, I haven't got much on the rest of the day, if I'm honest, guys. I've got a few bits of drainage to pop and do here and there, but nothing crazy. The drainage is mad busy at the moment, which is nice to see. Um, it's taken me a little bit away from JCD, and that is the juggle too. It's interesting when you see on the, the internet, you know, people go, oh, the average millionaire's got seven forms of income, like, or seven streams of income. It's like, I, I, I struggle with the two I've got, let alone, uh, you know, adding more on top of that, another five on top of that. It's just, um, it's just ludicrous. But I think that, that, that sort of leans itself into that shiny object syndrome that a lot of people seem to suffer on. But we won't go into that for you guys today. So I hope you've had an enjoyable one this time. I say a diverse week. We've had plenty going on. Keep an eye out for that National Drainage Show video. Make sure, as always, you hit that like and subscribe. I want to get us to 500 subscribers by the end of the year. So share this episode. Tell your friends about it. Follow us on our, on our other social channels. And I will check in with you guys on Monday. Peace.